Today we are reviewing Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson, a book that I didn't necessarily have on my TBR for 2020, actually it was more 2021, but as you saw with my last video, if you haven't saw it, you should go check it out. It's The Way of Kings uh, by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, I found out that there are some novels within the Cosmere universe that I needed to check out if I want to really appreciate everything that's going on in the Stormlight Archive. And uh, I was a huge fan of The Way of Kings, and I don't want to dampen any of the experience by missing out on some of the other novel tie-ins and the Cosmere as a whole, uh, which is why I've actually begun, if you can see this pathetic excuse for a mustache that my wife absolutely hates, uh, it's my Cosmere mustache, and I'm not shaving it until I'm caught up for the fourth book in the Stormlight Archive. And uh, let's just say uh, it's, it's not great. It's not great. Now, as far as like big implications in Stormlight Archive, I have no idea how it ties in. Don't let me know down in the comments. I want to be surprised. I'm in the middle of Words of Radiance right now, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing that happen. But today we're here to just talk about Warbreaker as a standalone novel. And Warbreaker was important for me as a reader and a Brandon Sanderson fan because it made me come to two different revelations. One is that I do appreciate uh, a good standalone book, but I think I am a series guy, uh, whether it be a trilogy or, you know, four or five books, six, seven books even, I am someone who appreciates the long haul. I think Warbreaker just solidifies to me, especially just within fantasy and these writers who do have, you know, tremendous world building and magic systems that I do prefer it in a series format. Uh, that doesn't mean that I won't ever read standalones or that I don't love them, but I do find them to be a little bit harder to judge because the author has to accomplish a lot within 650 pages. My other revelation is that Brandon Sanderson is polarizing, uh, which I've covered in all my other videos, but I think I kind of put my thumb on it and I was talking to, um, you know, fantasy book talk Alex. Uh, he has a channel. It's very good. Go check it out. But uh, Alex is reading The Way of Kings, or at this point he's probably finished it, but you know, he wasn't really vibing. He's saying, you know, man, it's getting it's a little slow. This Kaladin guy seems a little repetitive. And it's so funny because I felt kind of the same way, but I was overall sold on the book after like the first hundred pages, uh, just because of the way the plot was set up. And that's the thing with Brandon Sanderson. It's like, I don't want to say he's bad at pacing, but he has a distinct pace where we hit that Sander Lanch in that last 200 pages. And if you are not sold on what's being built up those first few hundred pages, sometimes that payoff can really miss the mark. And I'm not saying that's that's the case or that Alex felt like that or anything like that. But I'm just saying in general, uh, whenever you do take that approach to pace like Sanderson does, you do risk losing people if, if the buildup isn't worth it to them for the payoff. Uh, so that's just something I kind of realized, and he has his unique parts, right? Like his plot's always going to be solid, whether or not it, per it interests you or it pertains to your taste, that is to be decided. Uh, he's always going to have a pretty interesting magic system, uh, and he's always going to have a multiple cast of characters, at least from what I've read of Sanderson, Mistborn, Warbreaker, and now I'm into the Stormlight Archive. Um, so those are two big revelations I took back from this, is just... Standalones might not be my favorite, and I think Sanderson's formula can result in very polarizing opinions. With that said, I don't think Warbreaker is a book that I'm going to necessarily recommend to everyone, but if someone were to read it and name it to be like, you know, this amazing thing, like uh, tons of booktubers have given it a five-star review. If you look at it, it's one of the highest rated books I've seen on Goodreads, uh, which is a terrible website, by the way. Um, but it is one of the highest rated books for a reason. It's because in those 600 or 650 pages for a standalone book, Sanderson took a very ambitious stance at the beginning of the book and it kind of went off to the races and he was able to accomplish a lot. However, I felt very underwhelmed and talking about the Sanderson formula, the build up here, it, it's all political intrigue, right? So to give you a backstory, uh, the summary, this is spoiler free, but we have essentially, just to make it very elementary, uh, two cities, right? And we have Halandrin, which is a much more liberal city, and colors are a big deal in this world that Worldbreaker takes a, a, a place in. And in Halandrin, the colors are a part of everyday life, and the religion is much more different than the other place in the story, Idris. Idris is a much more um, reserved, so colors are kind of frowned upon, like wearing a big bright color or having your hair changed to a different color is uh, considered a pr pretty risque, if you will. Whereas Halandrin is, again, much more liberal with it. Uh, the colors are a part of everyday life. But the deities are different. Uh, Halandrin, which used to... 
or I'm sorry, Idris, which used to be where Halandrin is and got kind of pushed off into this mountain range. And, and it's like the remnants of, it, of an ancient civilization almost. Um, their deity, Idris's deity, is very um, kind of like the Christian god. There's one god. You don't see him, but you, you pray to him. And then in Halandrin, we have people who are returned, which kind of ties into the magic system. I'll explain in just a second. But in Halandrin, we have gods among us. You know, imagine if we had, you know, the Greek gods walking among us and we have these priests that go to their every beck and call and make sure that their will is done. Uh, and they all have their own kind of roles in society. So very, very different. But these two cities now are coming to a head and it feels like we're on the cusp of war. And now Idris's two queen daughters must intermingle into the city, one to be married to the God King, which is the God among all gods in Halandrin, um, who has plenty of breaths, which then takes me to the magic system. And before I get to the magic system, I do want to say I thought the plot and the setup to the story was good. It kind of felt rushed at the beginning, but again, we're in a standalone, so we don't have three or four novels to kind of set the pace. So I, I think I'll give him credit. I think he set up the story, he got into it, um, and it kind of, it, it got me. It got me. It hooked me right from the beginning, and I think it's going to hook a lot of different people. Uh, and then you come to the magic system. The magic system for me is probably my favorite that has been in a Sanderson book. And again, I've read Way of Kings. I'm halfway through Words of Radiance now, about halfway. And I've read Mistborn Era 1. I loved it. it. It was, I think it's basic enough. And again, it's in a standalone, so it kind of had to be. And it, I don't know, it was simple enough for me to follow, but there were still like rules to it. And there were still little intricacies that I really enjoyed. Essentially, uh, I'll just keep it really basic because kind of the plot exposes some of the magic system. But just imagine that breath, uh, maintaining your breath, your life, if you will, is your magic and that you can awaken inanimate objects like a, like a scarf to do what you tell it to do by giving it breaths. The more breaths that you hold, which people can offer up to you, they can actually give a command that will give you their breaths, um, make you more powerful and you reach different heights of this power. And the God King, the main deity within Halandrin, has the most breaths. And the more breaths you have, the more abilities you have. So you're just overall a lot stronger. Yeah, I love the magic system. Really cool. Not super in the hard magic systems, but I'm definitely becoming more and more sold. I appreciate that Sanderson is so creative and so unique in that aspect. In every single book I read of his, it's just, uh, that man's mind is, <laughs> is insane. Um, in a good way. In a good way. And I think the magic system is something that anyone could understand. Uh, it's not as convoluted as some of the parts of the Allomancy and definitely not as convoluted as I think lashing with it being half explained to me so far in Stormlight has been. So for me, best magic system in a Sanderson story, in my opinion. So if you watch my reviews, you know that I am a big character driven person. It's why I absolutely love Song of Ice and Fire. I think Joe Abercrombie is like probably the most, uh, I think he's the most, talented modern fantasy writer um if not in the top three definitely but for me he's like my, my number one um the characters here there's some good we have queen's daughters we have we get the perspective of some of the gods like we really get to have an in tune um experience with a guy named light song who is a deity uh in halandrin and we also get from a very mysterious man who seems to be kind of an assassin and we even get a sword that is very special that I won't give away. The assassin and the sword to me were probably the most interesting characters in the story. And I thought Viviana, if I hope I'm saying that right, one of the king's daughters, by the end and her group of people that she's with, I thought that story really uh, paid off at the end. And I felt like her growth as a character, again, in just 650 pages, was well done enough to where like I really appreciated the character. I would give it like a solid B. Really enjoyed it. One of Sander, Sanderson's probably better characters, I think. But the rest of the cast, specifically the God King, Light Song, uh, and Siri, uh, I couldn't give a damn less about them. And it's something that I've seen for people who have been critical of the book, the very few that have been. That is the complaint, is that it's really hard to get in with the characters. But I also think that could be a byproduct of a standalone book. But I'm going to argue with myself here and play devil's advocate. When you look at a book like Sword of Kagan, which was, again, 600 pages in a standalone, man, I care. I think about those characters like once a week. <laughs> so Sanderson sacrifices a little bit of that to push forward this really intense plot in this really intricate magic system. 
and I think it got lost in translation a little bit. And because of the pace of the novel, it was a lot of political intrigue and a lot of just a lot of politics, right? A lot of wartime politics and some mystery within the religions of themselves. And I feel that it just wasn't interesting enough. Now, it doesn't mean I hated it, but I was I was pretty checked out about two to 300 pages in and just was struggling to really care. And again, some of the characters ended up paying off later down, but I just thought the God King, uh, that the romance angle that you'll see with them, Really missed the mark with me. I'd love to hear what other people thought because I thought it was like extremely cringe. So the characters for me were like average at best, like as a cast of characters, I thought it was average at best. And I thought it really hurt, hurt the book in general. The plot uh, was fine. I think it's interesting that there's supposed to be going to be a war break or two. I'm not going to say I won't read it, but I'm not like looking forward to it. I will, I'm going to read it. You know, I read way too many books as it is. And I am interested in the Cosmere as a whole now, way more than I was uh, prior to the Stormlight Archive. I felt like the setting of the book and the world building was uh, actually probably Sanderson's uh, least polished, I would say. Didn't feel really connected to the world. I felt like uh, definitely Mistborn Era 1 was a little bit more... Um, a little bit more encapsulating and a little bit more immersive. I kind of felt at times where I did, I could never, I'm not a very um, imagery driven reader. I don't imagine a lot of things in my head when I read. It's just how I am. It's unfortunate. Um, I will say the colors of the world, like I thought that was such a cool and simple way to add some, add some spice to the story and add a lot of, uh, you know, just uniqueness. And I feel like with that, it was able to save a lot of the setting and a lot of the world building, but I didn't think it was outstanding by any means. Probably Sanderson's, uh, like I said, his least polish out of the works I've read. So for me, with it being a standalone, I thought the pace was a little bit slow. I do think the ending was fine. The climax, uh, I think it paid off the story, but again, I wasn't super high on the story to begin with. But there, there is a lot of mystery here. A lot's accomplished, 650 pages. And I think if you can stick out that pace and hey, you know what, I am willing to admit that maybe my taste in characters just don't mesh with what Sanderson likes to put forth in a lot of his stories. So you might love the stories and you might, If I think if you can get attached to two or three of these characters from the get-go, I really feel like you would love this story, which is probably why it has such a high rating on Goodreads. Just for me personally, wasn't my favorite. I think I gave it like a 3.5 on Goodreads. I might be able to be convinced to drop it to a 3 or a 4 if I had to. But I'm just going to be a perpetual fence sitter here and say 3.5. I'm not mad that I read this book. I'm excited to see how it ties in the Stormlight, but I wasn't fired up to read this to begin with. I really just wanted to get into Words of Radiance, so that could have taken effect on my opinion. I am I am not an authority on whether a book is amazing or not. I just want to put that out there. I just love sharing my opinions, and I like hearing yours. If you look at all my videos, I, I comment pretty much back on every single person that talks because... Um, I don't have a lot of friends in real life that read fantasy, and I like uh, I like talking about it. And uh, this just gives me a way to relay my opinion. So uh, if you don't agree with me, don't feel like this is me saying my word is bond and that it is uh, you know true beyond a doubt. I'm not uh, the Lord ruler over here. I'm just a, a guy that likes to talk shop and give uh, my half cocked opinion and kind of rant in front of a camera. So if Brandon Sanderson's your dude, or if you love the Stormlight Archive like I do. Uh, I think this book was worth reading without even knowing how it ties in the Stormlight. I feel like it was probably worth reading. I will say I think I should have waited until after getting caught up in Stormlight Archive or doing it before because for me, I just wanted to continue Stormlight. So not doing that made me just want to get through this book and be a little impatient. I had a Twitter follower. Uh, I can't remember the handle right now, but kind of told me that and kind of said, hey, like, you know, you don't need it. Just read it when you want to. And I, I should have listened. I should have listened because I think I could have got more out of it. Again, not like I hated it. Not like I was dreading it and slogging through it. It wasn't that bad, okay? It just wasn't, um, it wasn't wowing me. I would say I enjoyed it less than Mistborn Final Empire, like the first entry into Era 1. But I probably enjoyed it more than books 2 and 3 of Mistborn Era 1. So it's kind of in between there. Um, Cosmere fans, what do you think of my Cosmere mustache? And what did you think of Warbreaker when you read it? Or are you waiting to read it? Um, I'm super excited to get to, uh, through Words of Radiance and do that review. Um, the fandom has been awesome for Stormlight Archive. And just Sanderson in general. I think a lot of people, uh, you know, have, again, polarizing opinions about the man. But uh, it does bring up some pretty good conversation. And uh, that's what I love here. 
So if you liked the video, please like it. If you hated it, dislike it. And talk to me down in the comments and give me your opinions on, uh, on the mustache, the Cosmere mustache. I need to get through these books so I can shave off. And uh, I just really appreciate you taking your time and checking out this review. Follow me on Goodreads. It's a link down below. And you can also follow me on Twitter. If uh, you want to see more videos like it, go ahead and hit subscribe. But until next time, I hope you're safe. Be good. And remember to always keep turning the page.